There's this darnable problem with the pursuit of absolute purity. Be it ideological or, as is the case with the modern day wokeist movement, racial purity. The pursuit of the perfect representation, the ideal diversity hire. It's always one more whinge away, or one further complaint, and one more acquiescent surrender by a spineless diversity company. It's just like the bodies that built communism. One more corpse further up the hill, and finally we will have utopia. Yet. What happens when you go as far as you can, when you keep heading to the extreme again and again and again, and you finally arrive at the logical barrier that is the fact that there is no such thing as an absolute? What happens then when people like uh, Derek Garcia here come face to face with their own bigotry? <laughs> oh. That's a very interesting question. As in the article, D&D's problematic law that still needs fixing, Garcia has managed to tie himself into a bit of a knot, where on the one hand, absolute evil, unquestionable evil must exist. Because otherwise, how can you justify chasing these people out of the hobby, banishing them forever, and chasing them out of something they have loved for decades? If they aren't evil, then that would make you a pretty bad person, wouldn't it, Garcia? And yet at the same time, there cannot be such a thing as inherent absolute evil, because races like the Drow and the Orcs, well, they, they can't be evil. That's racism, don't you know? And any form of racism, no matter the rationale, must be evil. Wait, hold on. Aren't many of the D&D uh, the races quite inherently bigoted, you ask? Yes, and that's the beauty of all of this. It's of course spawned off by the latest batch of official Eretta for the Dungeons & Dragons RPG, where the Wizards of the Coast decided to cuck to the progressives yet again by a murdering vast segment of their own universe. Nothing particularly new about that, it happens all the time, but what's interesting is, after the Wizards of the Coast have actually slashed away so much of their lore, we've kind of arrived at the absolute, we've arrived at the wall where what, what, what do we demand now? Like we talked about in yesterday's video, this will be one of the cruxes around which the Wokist Civil War will begin to revolve. If you arrive at, okay, this is good enough, and yet our entire ideology is based upon making ever more extreme demands, what the hell do we do? It's a wonderful question. But D&D is still saddled with problematic lore it needs to address, so Garcia here will take the more extremist approach. He'll take it one step further, pushing ever further to the logical ends of the argument. Now, there's a very interesting thing here, because of course it's not enough to merely be reactive and merely removing the lore, you need to now take an active stance against bigotry. This is all well and good, but Dungeons and Dragons need to take the next logical step and clearly spell out that slavery is always an evil act. Instead of just removing instances of sexism and racism leaning texts, the game can clearly define that all forms of bigotry, including sexism, racism, homophobia, the usual buzzwords, whether born out of fear, ignorance, or indifference, are inherently evil worldviews. Aha. So, all of this, sexism, uh, racism, and slavery, as mentioned previously on in the article, are all absolutely evil and must be condemned in the most strident means possible. Because these are always evil aligned worldviews and actions regardless of the origins of these views and practices or any other rationalization. Yet, hold on there, I can spot the problem already, the drows... <laughs> practice, well, sexism, racism, and slavery constantly. It is the very fundament upon their entire society. So drows are evil, right? No, 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 drows can't be evil, but you just said that these are absolutely evil. But, 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 circle, no, square, peg, what? What is happening? <laughs> yes, precisely. You have a race that do all of the things that are inexcusably evil, regardless of rationale, and yet they can't be evil. Hum. <laughs> 
It's a lovely square peg, isn't it? Now, I am not thinking, honestly, that Garcia here is intelligent enough to understand the hole that he's dug for himself here. I really don't think so. Because this is one of those rota speaking points, talking points of the wokis. These things are absolutely evil, and yet defining a race as something is also wrong. So, you've got here, again, the square peg trying to be forced into the circular hole, but as with most problems with the human brain is that when you're looking at something and you're clearly wrong and you can't square it, you'll simply just draw a wonderful little line around it. This is another example of that beautiful, weaponized hypocrisy of the modern-day wokeist left, where they're staring the error right in the face and yet goes, I, I can't see anything. Eyes shut tightly. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you do now? Because this is where the problems are going to start appearing. This is where the cracks in the fundament are going to start spreading. Because now you've got D&D. &D. It is the most inclusive it has ever been. It has been conquered. It is occupied terrain now. It is willing to listen to any demand, no matter how ridiculous, no matter how far out there, they will destroy and ravage any part of their law if even so much as a single person asked for it, which was the example recently with Paizo, where Uno person had a problem with slavery and so they removed every mention of it from their law completely with no reason, no rationalization and no explanation whatsoever. The tyranny of the one Literally. So, if you've already got this, you've got them bending over backwards, they can listen to anything you say, and they will cater to your every demand. What do you do? You've, you've got the perfect setting. And yet, there are people like this who now want to destroy it even further. Who want to remove the idea of evil by making absolute evil an absolute, yet also something that cannot exist at the same time. Drows cannot be evil, and yet the drows are inherently evil because you must condemn the things the drows do regardless of their rationale or regardless of any other factors. Hmm. And of course, again, it's the usual power play. It's one faction pushing for yet further influence when there's no more influence to be gained. There's no more power you can have over Wizards of the Coast. They've already given you everything. You have the reins in your hands. The only thing you can do now is drive it yet further off the cliff. Now, personally, I don't particularly mind, and he does bring up one interesting little point here, and this will be another little crux. To truly fix its problematic elements, D&D, the world's best-known fantasy tabletop RPG, needs to forego using the Forgotten Realms as its default setting. Now, D&D, of course, is a rule set first and foremost, but you cannot really separate D&D from the Forgotten Realms, from their various fantasy realms. You can't really. It, it is a core fundament of the setting. Though you have many also great adventure uh, books and modules as well. This is the world. It is like Middle Earth to the Lord of the Rings, you know? And he's arguing that Wizards of the Coast should just abandon this completely and make up something completely new that has nothing to do with Dungeons and Dragons. Now, how will that go over, I wonder? You've got the most popular franchise and you're just gonna throw it away. You're going to abandon that and you're going to go make something completely different for the sake of diversity to the point where those people have finally said, okay, good enough is good enough, will now stop receiving support because their hobby is the racist and bigoted one? <laughs> it is the TERFs and radical feminist thing all over again. Now, to be fair, this is on a less clear-cut ideological basis because we have yet to see the true schism form in the definition of evil and racism here. The question is, will they be able to simply just hypocrisy, hypocrisy, English, to simply just overlook the problem inherent in having absolute evil and absolute innocence be literally the same thing? 
or will this finally create the schism? It depends, I guess, a little bit. I think we're, I think we're seeing it. I absolutely do believe that we are currently seeing it right now. But people are getting sick of the constant push for what seems to already be good enough. And this, again, it is, it is a long-ass article. And that is another symptom as well of trying to square that round peg right there. Because you can't... You can't figure out what the hell you're writing. It's like, is my point good? I mean, ignore it. Just, just keep typing. Just keep typing. I'm sure it'll. I'm sure nobody will notice if I just drowned them in enough words. <laughs> oh, we'll see about that. Uh, I'm starting to quite like Screen Rant. It is the new and foremost source for absolute lunacy. I did see one article as well saying that manga has always been political, and you know what? I considered it, but. It might be too low-hanging fruit, even for me. We'll see. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.